you've just gotten to grips with basic recordings and you know you're laying your tracks down and uh, you know you're in need of some EQ because you, you might be recording in your bedroom the acoustics aren't perfect and you just need to get a little bit of character on your stuff doesn't matter vocals guitars keyboards any instrument really it's such an easy EQ to use you know it's very simple you've got boost and cut on the outer control right here and you've got your frequency sweep on the upper control and that's it for all the bands there's, there's no you know shaping there's no weird you know I mean certain certain plugins can look very kind of daunting and very industrial looking and it's like oh god I don't know what this Q thing means I don't know I don't know what I'm doing I just want something simple that I can reach for and it's gonna do the job these EQs are just like that they're workhorses you want something boosted boom there it is you want something cut there it is and it just it'll give you a little bit of tweakery that you can do narrow or wide and that's it there's, there's no there's no bullshit it just does what it says on the tin some of these later API EQs boosted in 2 dB steps this 954C which came as part of the console is actually a sweep so you're not you're not stuck to the dB increment so you can you can do tiny adjustments or huge adjustments without having to click through it um, it's just a very musical EQ uh, not exactly surgical you know if you need to do really tight scoops on anything it's it's not that surgical but it's it's nice and nice and musical I'll say it again so we can have a quick listen to uh, Mo's voice for example um, so I've just soloed him here and we're listening to it without it in the circuit and it's you know it's nice because it was recorded on a lot well, it was recorded through this desk it was recorded with a lovely vintage Neumann U47 valve mic you know Mo's got good mic technique and stuff like that so it, it, it's already nice to begin with so but we can we can use this to just give it a bit more character maybe take out a little bit of a little bit of honk in the voice add a little sparkle at the top and, and maybe give him a li little bit more weight so you know he's got a lovely round bassy voice so we just maybe want to accentuate that so we can do that so this is a little run without and then we can have a listen to the same piece with the EQ in and you can see I've got it on a bell shape this this EQ does uh, wide a wide Q a narrow Q if you're cutting anything in particular shelf on the low and the top band and then narrow and wide on the mid band so I've just dialed in a little bit of low sort of around I don't know 150 ish to 200 just to give him a bit more body and um, taking out a little bit of honk in that sort of five to 700 area and then I've given him you know this EQ goes up to 16k I would normally I would boost higher but this high band is really nice it's not too harsh it's not going to take your head off so I've given him a little spike like a dB and a half or something just to bring out the air so uh, we can have a listen to it with that in a dream crested firefly said she got the look and but I don't know why with joint wings on a flight for two and back in Reached up so high there you way go. beyond the There's a blue. few few plug-in manufacturers that have, you know, copied the API series. Uh, again, they, they won't be these 954s, they'll be the 550Bs and As. And I have to say they've they've done a very, very good job. Um if I'm allowed to say what my favorite is, I, I, I'd go with the Universal Audio people. They they just they know what they're doing, and they've got it down to almost the real thing. You know, I mean, there are certain electronic idiosyncrasies that you cannot quite yet replicate, 
but it's just like I mean I've compared them I've got both I've got the plug-in version I've got the real deal in my studio and it's like okay yeah this is good I mean I still like the old one the original old school stick a signal through electronics and see what happens but you know if you need to use it across 24 channels I don't have the money to buy 24 API EQs I wish I had I mean if I need them I come and work in here this is brilliant but when I'm working at home the plugin will have to do and if I need something to run through the actual thing, I'll run it through the EQ, record it back in. That's a good way of doing it. I mean, it's nice to have both, actually, because, you know, you tweak in the plug in, you go, yeah, that's cool, but I'm not getting I'm not getting a vibe yet. And then you plug it through an actual analog box and you tweak it and you go, oh, wow. And, and you, you'll find that with, with analog gear, you can push it you can push it a lot harder than you can with, with a plug-in. With a plug-in, if you go into digital distortion, that's a game over. It sounds horrible, but with, with analog and with API specifically, there's so much headroom in, in their electronics that you can just drive the hell out of it. I mean, I've, I've done things just to try it, just to check it, where you just boost everything to the max, and it still sounds good. A dream crested firefly said she got the look, but I don't know why. We joined wings on a flight for two. 